ping and trace route are a couple of tools that we will use on a regular basis in order to test and verify connectivity and then also to trace uh, using traceroute to trace which path packets take through the network. Now we've put together a simple network here to demonstrate this. And you'll see we've got three routers, we've got a couple of switches, a couple of PCs. Now up here I've given the network addresses. So this is a 192.168.1.0/24 network. And then down here under PC0 you'll see it's dot 10 and for R1 we have G01 and it's dot 1. So this is going to be the default gateway for that PC. And then for all of our routers, you'll see our interfaces identified along with the IP address and then up above the network ranges. So hopefully that all makes sense. All right, now let's talk about how we'd use ping and traceroute to verify connectivity. And we're going to do that from command prompt. And you'll do it from the command prompt on PCs, either Windows or Linux or Mac or whatever. Uh, you can also do it from Cisco devices themselves. But let's start with this PC. So we'll go to PC0 over here, and we'll open up the command prompt. And from the command prompt, I want to ping this PC over here, which is 3.10. So I'm going to ping 192.168.3.10. Now, my first one is going to time out. That's not a big deal. I just reset this network. And so that timeout is due to ARP. But after that, I'm going to get re four reply or three replies. Now, when I do this from a Windows PC, it's going to ping four times. Different operating systems are going to use different uh, numbers of pings. But this will tell me, so I got my request timed out on my first one, and then reply from, and it'll tell me where it replied from. And you really need to watch that, because sometimes you get a reply from a router along the way that says destination host unreachable, but people don't see that. They just see the reply from, and they just stop and say, oh, it worked. Um, but this is what it should say. If it actually worked, you should get a reply from the destination that you pinged. It'll tell you how many bytes were involved in the ping, how long the trip was, in this case less than one millisecond, and the TTL is the time to live, or how many more hops it could have gone through before it would have timed out. And then it sums it up with statistics. For this ping to that device, we sent four packets, we received three, we lost one, which is 25% packet loss. Now remember, that was due to a uh, ARP going on, an ARP request going on at the other end. So if I do it again, hit my up arrow, this time I should get four replies in a row. Okay, couple of things here. <clears throat> One of the things that you can do from a Windows system, if you want to ping multiple times rather than four, you can do a ping, and I actually don't know if Packet Tracer is going to support this, minus T to 3.10. And what that'll do is that will ping eternally. So it will keep going until you time it out. Now you'll notice over here sometimes the timing will change. That's because of network traffic. So this is a great way to look and see how much network traffic is impacting your ping. The other thing is if you have occasional drops on your network, you might get a few request timed outs. So this is a great way to see if you're having congestion issues or dropping issues on your network. Now, if you want to let it run for an extended period of time, you obviously don't want to sit here and just watch it the entire time. So what you'd end up doing, or what I end up doing, is I redirect the output of that to a text file. Let's see if Packet Tracer supports that. No, it doesn't. Uh, but a regular PC will support that. And what will happen is it'll just go to, it'll drop you down to the next line, but it won't actually take you to another command prompt because it's redirecting the output to that text file. So you just let that run. When you're done, you can let it run for overnight or for a couple of days or an hour. So just however long you want to test it for. Then Control-C will break you out of it. And then you'll be able to pull up the document and you'll be able to pull up your text file and you'll be able to scroll through it and see the impact, see if it worked or not. So ping is great for testing connectivity. Now, one of the things you will do, let's say I didn't get a reply, I can look at my network map here and say, all right, I couldn't get it to reply all the way here. What if I went to ping my default gateway? or the next top on the other side of this router, or this. And I can ping any one of these. And where I get timeouts, that tells me if, it, if I can't get connectivity all the way through, if I get all request timed outs, that will tell me where I'm running into an issue at. And so that becomes really, really useful. 
Now, one thing that this does not do is this does not tell me the path that packets went through to get there. Now, in this case, in this network, you'll see I just have one path, so that's not that big of a deal. However, in a larger network, it might be an issue. So, what we'll do is we'll run the command trace route, and it's trace RT. And it's trace route in Linux or Cisco. It's trace RT in uh, Windows. So I'm going to trace RT to the same device. And now what it's going to do is it's going to show me every hop that we went to get through here. So I have, I'm going to have to move these back and forth. My first hop was 192.168.1.1, which was right here. Then it went from there to 2.2. .2. And that's going to be this address right here. And then the next one it should have been hit was 2.6 and then finally 3.10. And if we look, we can see that's exactly the path that it went through. So we know that it worked exactly the way we want it to. Our trace works. Now, a couple of things to watch for here. If we start getting timeouts, then that'll mean that's where we have a problem getting to that destination. We're having a problem with roughly whatever device that it started timing out from. Okay, so that's really useful from a uh, Windows side. What about the same things from a Cisco perspective? So let's open up our Cisco router. And I'm going to do the same thing here, but this time it's going to look a little bit different. So let me go to privileged exec mode, and I'm going to ping 192.168.3.10. Now, this actually pings five times, but you'll notice that it does it a little bit differently. So here it gives us exclamation points. Now, an exclamation point is the same thing as a reply from. It means, yes, it worked. If you get a capital U, that means the destination host is unreachable. If you get a period, then you get a, or it means there's a request timed out. So let's ping 192.168.3.11, which doesn't exist. Now this is going to give us all periods. And you'll see them coming across right there. Now let's try to ping something that's not in our routing table, 10.1.1.12. And this, again, it has no idea how to get to, so we get all timeouts. All right. Now, this is a standard ping. Let me go back to, we're going to ping this device right here, 192.168.2.2, and we're pinging from this device. So we're going to ping 192.168.2.2. And this should work just fine. And we get five replies. Now, one of the things to be aware of when you run a ping from a Cisco router, a Cisco router is going to have more than one interface. So it's going to ping using the interface that is closest to the destination. And since I'm pinging 2.2, .2, it's going to ping from 2.1, this interface right here. Now I can change that. And I'll do that sometimes if I want to test routing. So if I ping here and get a response back, that means I've got good connectivity. But if I ping from here and don't get a response back, it means this device might not have a return route to this device. So that's why it becomes useful sometimes to choose the interface that we're pinging from. Now, the other thing to keep in mind, this pinged five times, and it used 100 byte ICMP echoes. Windows used 32 bytes. This did 100 bytes. All right, what if I wanted to put the network under load? Let's say I wanted to ping with bigger packets. I can do that too. Uh, but it requires that I do an extended ping rather than a standard ping. And so to do that, I type ping, and then I just don't give it an IP address, and I hit enter. And so then it's going to start prompting me for questions. What protocol do I want? IP is the default, so I just hit enter. Target address, 192.168.2.2. How many times do I want to do it? I want to do a little more stress here, so I'm going to do this. Let's do it 10 times. Uh, datagram size is 100 bytes. Let me do 1,000 bytes. Timeout, 2 seconds, that's fine. And then here I have extended commands. Now the default is no. I'm going to hit yes. And this is where I can set my source address. I'm going to ping from 192.168.1.1 rather than 2.1. Type of service is fine. 
Pretty much everything else will want to leave intact most of the time. Sweep a range of sizes says instead of just doing a standard size, make every ping a different size. So that's another way of just putting a little stress on the network. And so it ran packets sent to with this source address. It ran 10 times. I get 10 replies. And here's all of my statistics. Success rate 100%. We got 10 out of 10. Round trip, av min average max, and how many milliseconds it took to do each one. So that's running an extended ping. Now I can also run a trace route from here. So just like I did with the PC, except in uh, Cisco, it's trace route. It's the same thing in Linux, trace route instead of trace RT. 192.168.3.10. And that'll trace route for And this time it only took three hops instead of four. It took four from the PC because this router was counted as one of them. Now from here it's one, two, three hops and we're at our destination. Now just like I can do extended pings, I can do an extended trace route as well. So let me do trace route and just hit enter. Protocol, target IP address, very very similar to what we dealt with before. Set so my source address, this time I want to do 1.1 as my source address. Numeric display, yeah I'm okay with the numeric display. Timeouts, probe count, maximum and minimum time to live, and there it runs. Now if I want to do, if I want to trace this, trace over 30 hops, if I think it might be more than 30 hops, I can extend my maximum time to live. Uh, I can choose to do numeric display, yes or no. If I do numeric display, it'll just display the IP address. If I do no numeric display, it'll try to resolve the actual names. Um, which I have no name resolution set up in the sample network, so that doesn't really matter. But uh, that gives you an idea of how we'll use ping and trace route. Now, as far as using them to troubleshoot, we talked about on the uh, PC, we'll sometimes ping different hops to make sure it's getting to the right locations. Make uh, Try to isolate where there's a problem. We'll do trace route the same way. We'll do the same thing on the routers. We'll use pings and trace routes to try to verify where traffic is going, verify that uh, devices are reachable, and um, verify that they're reachable and that we have routes to and from uh, those networks and those devices. So that's a real quick rundown of how to use ping and trace route on PCs and on Cisco devices.